Today, we're going to look at blood plasma, um, the liquid part. We'll talk about platelets a little bit more with that. And then the next section, we'll get into blood typing, which is probably my favorite part. If you've donated blood and things like that, it's probably more pertinent to you because you've talked about it and you've heard about it before. So plasma is actually clear or straw. It's kind of a light yellow colored fluid portion of the blood. Most of it is water. It's the liquid portion and 92% of it is water. But it also contains like your electrolytes. It carries your gases. The plasma is really the part of the blood that functions as the transporting part. So it's going to carry nutrients, gas, uh, electrolytes, pH, um, chemistry, we're studying pH, it's going to help, help keep that pH at a normal level. Inside of these, inside of your plasma, plasma proteins are going to be the most abundant dissolved substance. Uh, they're not used for energy and they're grouped into albumins, globulins, and fibrinogen. And here again, some of these you will see on a, a blood test if you have a full physical. Uh, albumins are important because they maintain your osmotic pressure. So that's going to help um, keep your veins and arteries pushed out or full, as I might say. So albumins are going to produce pressure and they are the largest percent. So 60% of your plasma proteins are albumins. Globulins are 36% approximately. There's alpha, beta, gamma globulins. Alpha and beta globulins are going to help transport fats and fat-soluble vitamins. When you take vitamins, there's some vitamins that are water-soluble. They go right through your body. You can take handfuls and handfuls of vitamin C. And if you have excess vitamin C, your body will get rid of it. Fat-soluble vitamins will actually stay in your fat cells for a portion of time. So those would be vitamins that you can actually overdose on because they don't leave your body right away. So alpha and beta globulins are going to transport fats, fat soluble. Gamma globulins are going to be a type of antibody, and we'll talk more about that in the next unit when we talk about blood types. Fibrinogen, only 4%, but very important. Its primary job is to help with blood clotting, blood coagulation. It's going to help clot your blood which in normal situations you don't want your blood clotting inside of your vessels. However, if you have a cut, um, internal bleeding, things like that, fibrinogen is going to be very important in stopping that bleeding. So here's the summary table that's always good to look at and study review. Origin, you can see that, that a lot of these proteins originate in your liver and that wasn't in the note portion. So most of those originate in your liver. Most important blood gases, and you probably study this in regular biology, oxygen, carbon dioxide, cellular respiration, the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Your body needs oxygen, carbon dioxide is going to be a waste. Plasma nutrients include amino acids, which help to build proteins, monosaccharides, simple sugars, nucleotides, uh, part of your DNA, lipids, and all of those from your um, digestive tract. Because lipids are not soluble, oil and water don't mix, fat and water don't mix, lipids don't dissolve. So because lipids don't dissolve in water, they're not going to dissolve in plasma. So they're going to be surrounded by protein molecules that are going to help to get rid of those fats. And then they're going to be carried as lipo, so there's the fat portion, lipo proteins. Fat is not soluble in water. And then it also carries some non-protein, and most of those non-protein substances have nitrogen in them. 
So non-protein, nitrogenous uh, substances, amino acids, again, urea, uric acid, uh, creatine, creatinine, these are, a lot of these are wastes that your blood will carry. Urea and uric acid are byproducts or ways of breaking down uh, different nucleic acids. So they're going to be left over. Urea, uh, the smell of urine, that urea is what gives it that smell. Amino acid is a byproduct from the breakdown of proteins. And creatinine comes from the breakdown of creatine or creatine phosphate and muscles that we talked about last chapter. Electrolytes, very important. Um, they're absorbed by the intestine. Uh, they might be byproducts. They're important for muscular functioning, uh, nervous system functioning. Sodium ions, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, pretty much kind of in the order that they'd be found in your body. Sodium ions are very there's a lot of sodium ions, and then a few other ones. Some of them are important for osmotic pressure, blood pressure. So, for example, we have a student that plays basketball and kind of has her loopy spells, and that's because of a drop in sodium and her blood pressure goes out of whack, and that's due to sodium affects your blood pressure. Uh, pH bicarbonates and your phosphates are going to affect your pH more than your sodium, potassium, etc. Uh, table, we've looked at this before. We talked about the formed elements last time. So here, this section, we've concentrated more on what's inside of your plasma. Here you can see these are your proteins. Um, your other ones are going to be non-proteins. The gases, notice nitrogen is also on that table besides oxygen and carbon dioxide.